Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 113. We'll talk about to get past COVID, most of us need our third shots and some of us need four, and some discussions about have to versus should do and versus risk tolerance. Uh, and so hot topic today, I think a really good post today from Caitlin Gentilini about are we in a public health emergency or not? And some discussion about how you decide whether that what qualifies as an emergency versus endemic. Uh, my, I would say I don't think we're in a public health emergency anymore, but also nor are we in an endemic phase yet either. We're in a middle territory and we have to set our risk tolerance and, and our interventions accordingly. Uh, so all eyes on South Africa again to see you know how much of the their rise in the BA45 variants causes the whether they'll cause a similar number of hospitalizations and, and deaths. Uh, and the, the key concept is decoupling. Is as you get more more immunity, uh, you will de get a decoupling. So hopefully the next wave of Omicron won't be as severe, nor the hospitalizations, nor the deaths. But we don't know yet because it's still on their way up. And unfortunately, hospitalizations are headed back up in South Africa, as are as they are in some areas of the United States right now. Uh, the key thing to think remember is there was a lot of misunderstanding. I think there was a widely reported in the press initially that Omicron might be less severe, and some people even were calling it, quote, the na nature's vaccine, which was wrong. Uh, Omicron variant is just as severe as the Wuhan original strain. Uh, what made it less severe wasn't any evolution to being milder. It was the fact that people had immunity. And so here's a study, and yes, it's a preprint, but it's written pretty well, so I, I suspect it will get uh, published. Uh, and so SARS-CoV-2 has not changed in its severity. However, we have adapted by A, either getting vaccinated or having been infected a couple times. However, vaccination is much more uh, predictable and much more protective. Uh, people are also forgetting that there's nothing that stops SARS-CoV from going the other way. And SARS-CoV-1 had a very high mortality rate, 14 to 15 percent, compared to the 0 0.5 to 1 percent mortality of Wuhan with no immunity. Uh, and so it could mutate in a different direction, and that's why you want as much immunity as possible that's more predictable, and that's getting at least your third shot. Uh, the studies out uh, again in South Africa is doing some great work on this. Uh, the green bar, these are the people who've had vaccination versus not vaccination. They had Omicron and then how protective are those antibodies versus uh, BA4 and 5 and you have much better predictable durable response if you've been vaccinated. So whether you've been infected or not previously, you still should have those three shots in to give you that nice baseline that's much more predictable. Uh, and then we'll see, you know, we'll have to watch show over time. Everyone wants to know what the future is. We just don't know. We have to wait and see what the South Africa data is. And of course, look at our own data too. Uh, and our big problem here in the United States is just that three shot vaccination rate that everybody is doing, or most of the developed world is doing so much better than us. Uh, and look at Japan really taking off. They're going to be hitting 60% with a three shot rate. We're still hovering down here at 31%, which is just not near as productive. So these people get to return to normal before we do and are going to have less problem because we just can't get enough people to get that last third shot. Uh, and so numbers are heading back up across the country. The Northeast has been, uh, you know, smoldering for a while, but now you see Michigan and, and uh, Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota starting to take off as well. Uh, so are those rates causing hospitalizations? Well, that's what we have to follow. Uh, if you look at Region 2, which is New York, uh, in that area, you see that their numbers are, hospitalizations are heading up, and actually to the point uh, that it's equaling their Delta surge. Their Delta surge wasn't quite as severe as ours was, but it's starting to head up that way, especially amongst the elderly. It's even quite a bit higher. Uh, region 4. In Minneapolis, or Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, that kind of area, their numbers are heading up to not near their Delta surge, but they are up, and uh, that's this is pretty recent, so we'll just have to wait and see there. Uh, here in our region, uh, just a very faint increase, and uh, not to the, even to last summer's hospitalizations yet, but again, we have just to wait and see. And a lot of it's going to be dependent on that three-shot vaccination rate and where we are with that. Uh, so locally, the risk dial did move up. You'll see that UNL's dashboard's going up, and you'll know you be hearing in the news soon that a couple LPS schools are going to put masks in place for, for some selected schools. Uh, thankfully, hospitalizations aren't up that much, but you can spot a little bit of an increased trend there, so uh, something to watch out lo here locally. Um, and the big thing, again, locally is that three-shot vaccination. So Lincoln, Nebraska is in Lancaster County. North Platte, Nebraska is in Lincoln County. So Lincoln and Omaha, they've, they're basically hel helping our vaccination rates above average. Uh, so three-shot vaccination rate across the country is 31%. Here in Lincoln, we're about 38. Uh, we're in the 20 range down way out in North Platte, unfortunately. This is going to be the biggest thing that may predict our severity is what that three-shot vaccination rate is. Uh, in Lincoln, we've got another problem is that we have some pretty wide disparities in vaccination rates amongst ethnicity, especially in the black population. And unfortunately, that is why their mortality is much worse. 
Uh, now at the health department website, I think I think these uh, you have to be, take a little bit of grain of salt because these aren't age adjusted. But, but if you look at the deaths versus the proportion of population, the black population is most often it's that vaccination rate. Hispanic, I think this is falsely low because it's a much younger population than this population. Uh, to get a true comparison, we'd have to do some age adjustment, which I hope our uh, epidemiologists either locally at the state will do. Uh, kind of like doc, Dr. Matt Donahue, when he did an ACE-adjusted hospitalization rate for vaccinations, you know, zero shots versus two shots versus three. And again, this is the biggest thing that's going to keep us from having to struggle with hospitalization and capacity issues in the, the, the future is that three-shot vaccination rate. Um, and so what are COVID hospitals? This is kind of an interesting article for Atlantic. I don't think, I think we're getting more of a preview here in Nebraska for our hospitals, but hospitals are still playing catch up. So we don't want another big surge. Uh, the uh, healthcare providers are a little burnt out. So hopefully we get more of a reprieve here than they got on the north, in the Northeast. Um, the other thing to talk about is, 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 is need for focus on the economics of this. And I actually had a little debate earlier today about someone who wasn't happy about us uh, putting a mask back in place in a school. And he kept saying, well, what about, you know, the risk is really low. What's the risk of hospitalization or death? And I said, well, it's not just hospitalization or death uh, that we're worried about in kids. We, we just don't want them to be sick because when they're sick, they miss school. And we know that kids learn better in school. So if, if we put masks back in place in East Ridge Elementary and it prevents 40, 50 infections, that's 40 or 50 kids who don't have to miss school. That's good for them because they learn more. There's also an economic impact because if those 40, 50 kids got sick and mom have to stay home, well, you know, as an employer, I want my people working. I don't want them to have to stay home with their kids because we didn't slow it down when we could have with a very, very simple intervention like wearing masks. So people need to start thinking about the economic side of this things too. And we should really try to push their three extra or four for some people uh, vaccination rates for economic reasons as well. So have to versus should do in risk setting. And so part of this is that endemic versus not debate. Um, are we in a public health emergency? And so I'd encourage you to read through this, uh, and not just listen to me. Um, and it's kind of a continuation of what I mentioned last week, and this is Dr. Lipkin's discussion about what does endemic mean, and it should be some predictability, which we're not there yet. We can't predict where we're headed. Um, and so we are not in an endemic phase at this point. Uh, and it's not a black or white decision what's endemic. And some people would say, well, compare endemic compared to what? Uh, so when is endemic? Well, some might say, well, when it's comparable to a typical flu risk, and I think a lot of people are under the misimpression uh, that this is out, we're already back down to flu risk, and we're actually we're not, and that's a numbers thing. So, for example, if you look at the daily death rate right now, we're averaging about 300 deaths a day uh, from COVID, and the numbers are going up, by the way, so you'll notice that weekly change going up 14.5%. So what is that annualized? Well, 300 deaths a day is about 110,000 deaths a year. And even our one of our most recent bad influenza years uh, within the last decade, we hit 61,000. So we're, well, we're, already, we're still well above a bad flu year, and we're headed back up again, by the way. So we're not even down to a bad flu year yet, rather than a typical flu year. So when those deaths get down to, say, 100 uh, a day, then, yeah, then we might be sort of down to influenza risk, but we're not there yet. So I would say, no, we're nowhere close to endemic yet. We could get there, but uh, it looks like we'll have another surge, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, and people keep forgetting, like, they're like we wouldn't close schools for, uh, schools for flu. Why? Well, actually, yes, we did. And here's an article just from a couple years ago, an article about schools closing because of flu outbreaks. And so just like we would in a flu outbreak, we might have to wear school, close school, although in the future, I don't think we'll have to close school for influenza because we can have the wear a mask, actually, because we've discovered that masks work. So masks is the way to keep your school from closing, uh, especially in selective cases. I don't think we're going to need them widespread in the future, but we may have to do them selectively. Um, and again, you know, at the end of the day, like I keep saying, it's dead versus not dead. And Lincoln still has the best and uh, lowest mortality rate in our region because I think we've been selective about when we need to do things. We haven't impaired our economy and we've uh, maintained the education of our kids, but we've also caused our deaths to stay low by uh, what I think in the future will be selective masking. Uh, and again, comparatively, and even uh, some people have said, well, Bellevue didn't do too bad. They didn't do mass as much as you guys did. Yeah, I said, yeah, but they're a younger population. So again, if our uh, state epidemiologist could do some age-adjusted race, it'd be even more terrible. And I would see, think you'd see Lincoln pop out even better on that. So... Uh, did I say you should get your three shot yet? Of course. And then this may change. Uh, so look for this to change tomorrow uh, in the next days, probably tomorrow. The CDC may say five, three shots in five years and up. And so it should be pretty simple. If you're over five or older, you should have your third shot. And we'll find out in a couple in a month or so whether we can get uh, vaccines for younger kids uh, because you need that more durable immunity. And again, it's not just dead, it's not just hospital, it's not just long COVID, it's all these things put together. And so I think 
part of the problem is people keep trying to make this a one variable equation and this is the, these are multivariable equations and sometimes you have many may have very different reasons for why you decide to get that fourth shot for example or mask at certain intervals for example and so think of about these different ways and the, the vaccinations probably not going to prevent mucos uh, all infections you may get a mucosal infection for example because the omicron in uh, uh, incubation phase is just so short it's too fast for your b cells to, to react and, and protect you fully from any infection so I think where are we headed? I think, uh, like I said last time, I think it, the basically is, a, is coronavirus is a three-shot primary series. Some people potentially needing that fourth shot. And in the future, if anything, uh, and that's not uncommon, like I said, look at how many of our vaccine schedules that we put our kids and adults through are three shots with a, potentially a fourth dot shot. But I think in the future, we'll probably head toward influenza. I'm going to bet that we're going to have an annual flu and COVID booster, and maybe RSV too, and that would prevent a lot of infections, a lot of missed work, a lot of missed schools uh, in the future. So I think that's where we're headed to this fall. So have to versus should do uh, versus what would I do? And so some people, I've, I've heard people say, well, I'm, I didn't wear a mask in the, air, on the, in the airport because I no longer have to. And I'd say, well, whether you have to is not the main decision. The question is, should you? Uh, and actually for me, what did I do? Well, I did get my fourth shot. It wasn't, I didn't think I needed it for, for a health risk reason. I actually was more of an economic reason. I like to travel and I like to work and I didn't want to miss travel and I didn't want to work, miss work. And if that fourth shot was going to help that, that was the main reason I took my fourth shot. I did alternate. I went from a Moderna to a Pfizer. And if you're at a Pfizer, I'd encourage you to do that as well. And I'll keep wearing masks in a couple places. So I'm going to wear a mask in the airport from arrival to cruising altitude. I think that is the highest risk area in the world is that airport from the front door of the airport to your plane hitting cruising altitude. That's where variants spread. That's where the next one's going to come leaking through. So if you want to protect yourself, that's the time to do it. Uh, while when your uh, airplane, air, airplane's at cruising altitude, you're only uh, exposed to maybe 10 or so people around you. You've got really good ventilation. I, don't, I actually did take mine off last time I took an airplane flight at cruising altitude. I'd also wear a mask at a healthcare facility. Why? Because, well, one, that's where sick people are, so the chances that someone has COVID is going to be higher there. And there's also more immunocompromised people. I wouldn't want to accidentally infect somebody because I infected them. And then I think masking for local surges. So our schools, uh, I think as we get some outbreaks locally, we may have not a school-wide mask requirement, but a intermittent uh, local school requirements, at least for the next few weeks till we get through school season. And I think that might be the future. And that actually might not only prevent COVID outbreaks, but next time we get a flu outbreak, maybe rather than closing the school because of flu outbreak, if we could have said just have kids wear masks, that keeps them in, in school and it prevents mom and dad from having to miss work. So hopefully this is helpful to you uh, as an update. Again, so this is a disclaimer. These are my opinions, not for the places I work for or, or I'm associated with, but this is just so you can verify who I am and that I do uh, work in this field. Uh, so hopefully this helps. And again, the links to all these articles are in the notes section below.